how did you how were you able to overcome your obstacles of you know the you know the person that doesn't have the genetics that you know a right. Philippines has or something like that? I think it was just the belief that uh, I wasn't going to stop until I got there, mm -hmm. and I knew there was a way. I knew I would find a way or I would create one, and and that. So the greatest blessing I had was all of the obstacles, right? It was all the people that said, you can't. It was all the injuries I had. It was all the times when I was like struggling and hitting my head against the wall because I couldn't build a certain body part. I'm like, no, I just won't accept no as an answer. I'm like, I have to figure this out. Because And somebody said to me, you know, if you can build one muscle, you can build them all. And whether or not that's true, um, it really resonated with me. And I was like, okay, like if I can build this much muscle on my legs and shoulders and chest, why the hell can't I build these other body parts? Because the same internal environment, right? Same internal chemistry, same internal uh, muscle fiber composition. So, you know, short of like the muscle belly length being different, yeah. it's the same thing. So that really inspired me to go, okay, well, I can figure this out. And I was just lucky to, because I was looking, because I wasn't closed off and thought I knew everything, because I was looking for the answers, the mentors and the guides appeared, right? Gotcha. You know, when the student is ready, the, the teacher will appear. For sure. So let's go a little bit further now, right? Now, how many years did you bodybuild professionally? Uh, seven professionally. Yeah, it was like eight, I guess. So I got my card in 2008 yeah. and uh, I retired officially in 2016. And why were, what was your like major reasoning for just stopping? Well, um, so when I first started bodybuilding at 17, I had a plan to get my pro card by 25. I wanted to win the Olympia by 30. So uh, that was my original plan. And I was going to retire at 35. That was, that was my plan from like literally the time I was 17. I'm like, because I knew in the back of my mind that bodybuilding. It's just not healthy. Like mm -hmm. if you're going to do this at the highest level, you're, you're definitely taking years off your life. And I knew that. So I made a commitment to myself to retire by 35, um, you know, which I did. But um, there's a lot of reasons, man. So, you know, when I was 30, my intention, I was, I was kind of positioning myself from the time I was 30 to, to start really pushing for the Olympia. Like mm -hmm. at that point, I hadn't really pushed anything, you know, at the, the extraneous things bodybuilders do. I hadn't really pushed anything really, really hard. And I was ready to kind of, I gave myself this five-year window where I'm like, all right, you're top 10 in the world now. Let's go. Let, let's let's drop the hammer and go. And I was extremely blessed in 2012 when I was uh, literally 30, 31, to have my my first child. And that just that shifted my values and my uh, priorities. So rather than being the most selfish person in the world who went through life with blinders on, I could only see that tunnel vision of Mr. Olympia. I now saw I have to take care of this little human. But even with the first one, because it was a son, I was like, man, I, we, we're just gonna be buddies. We're gonna be training partners. You need to come with me. And I was like, we're good. And then, you know, God blessed me again a year later with the daughter. <laughs> uh, and that changed it, man. That changed it for me. Like, both of them were definitely kind of just, the first one was a nudge, and the second one was a kick over the edge. And I was like, I just can't be the same person, man. I was competing. I was pretty ruthless. Like, I, had, I had a reputation for, for being so focused that I just wasn't always nice to be. I was always, I was never mean, but I was never thoughtful. Yeah, sure. So if you're getting in my way, I'm going to tell you you're getting in my way. Like, yeah. I, I, got a, I got a job to do, man. For sure. um, so... I realized when I had a daughter, I couldn't be that person anymore. I had to, I couldn't go home and be this nice, caring, loving dad and go to the gym and be a ruthless animal. Like it just didn't, didn't work in my brain. It was very hard for me. So I started to kind of, I almost started to, to, to blend the two. And I was like, well, at the gym, I'm not really doing the same, like, you know, the focus savagery kind of thing. And, and at home, I'm kind of not being the, the dad I want to be. So I was like, man, I just don't have the same purpose anymore. You know, to be, to, to, to be that committed at that high level. You have to be completely purpose driven. You need to know why I'm doing it. Why am I getting up every day at four o'clock? Why am I training three times a day? You know, and I just didn't have it anymore because I think my new purpose became being a, a great dad. True. Yeah, I think making it to the highest level, you need to be selfish. In a one thousand percent. One thousand. So it's funny because I ended up retiring from the sport of MMA at the age of twenty six, and that was right around the time when my son was born, mm -hmm. and so. I was thinking to myself, well, I can't continue to be a business owner, be a coach, and also be a professional athlete at the same time, yep. on top of being a father and being a husband. Yep. So I get that 100%, man. And that and that's that's a testament to you as a person, 